It seems like great pressure to live first. Among our government colleagues in the final leg of the CTBUH conference uh, 2016, to welcome you all at this great city. As the first to speak right after lunch is a challenge. So I give you an interesting overview of the skyscrapers in Hong Kong, and, the, and then followed by a discussion on the government's various policy and initiatives uh, in relation to the design, construction, and maintenance of the skyscrapers in here. So first, thanks to uh, CTBUH, there is a very comprehensive database about skyscrapers around the world. And uh, I have a look at its database and to see how Hong Kong fares. And let me share with you some of my observations. First, let's have a look at the building height exceeding 100 meters in height. The chart shows the current top 20 cities around the world with the most number of uh, 100 meter high uh, skyscrapers. As you probably have known, New York City has been at the top of the list for many, many years with a record of 773 100 meter plus buildings. Hong Kong is ranked second, followed by a fine balance of uh, North American, European, and Asia Pacific cities. If we move our bar slightly up, up to 150 meter plus, Hong Kong with 315 such buildings will become number one in the world, surpassing New York by almost 3% in number. So eight of the, 20, uh, or eight of the top 20 cities <coughs> are in China, and Hong Kong has outbuilt our peer cities to an extent that only the next three Chinese cities, i.e. Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen, adding up together, will amount to the number of skyscrapers in Hong Kong. So you will note that most of the top cities, in the, uh, top cities are in Asia, with only three cities in America, co American continent remaining in the top 20. So the diagram here allow us to visualize the world's tallest building through the time. Ever since the history, human built structure that are recognized at that time as the tallest building on earth, you never, they never have failed to meet the 140 meter mark, including the Great Pyramid, built around 4,500 years ago. So the world's tallest building also followed generally the geographic shift in the pivot of uh, civilization, industrialization, and global economy, moving from Africa to Europe, then to America, with the advancing of, uh, of the Asia in the, world, in the global arena, the world's tallest building are now in Asia and the Middle East. Let's have a look, closer look at the skyscrapers in Hong Kong. So there are a couple of interesting points which I would like to share with you. First, you may note that most of Hong Kong skyscrapers have a flat roof including the very buildings that we are now in. The International Commerce Center, the roof of many of our skyscrapers are indeed accessible and usable for areas. Why is it the case? One reason could be that in Hong Kong, we build skyscrapers mainly out of necessity and, re and not so much for their iconic significance. With the development intensity in Hong Kong, we need to create usable, uh, usable floor space up to the very top floor of those buildings. So this is a map of Hong Kong. The park in Xi'an, which account for about 24% of our, our land, are built up areas. Another 2% in purple are being built or planned for future development. The rest are undeveloped due to various reasons, such as terrain difficulties, and protection of our country park and greening space. 
So with uh, so little developable land, the development density in the build-up areas had to be very high to meet our needs. Hong Kong's population density stands at around 6,700 people per square kilometers, which may not be the highest in the world, but if we look at the urban density, the population density can be as high as 57,000 person per square kilometer. This is only comparable to two cities. One is Dakar, and other one is in, uh, in Mumbai, in India. So this chart illustrates another point I want to make. We build skyscraper not out of necessity. It shows the total number of stories, i.e. is related to the usable floor area. In the 150 plus skyscrapers, you will see Hong Kong has outperformed other cities by a great number. Where we look at the number of stories, and thanks to the developers in town and also their innovative uh, design teams and professionals, so we achieve amazing uh, output from this condenser city. So here is more, some more data showing the total GFA, the construction, the gauze floor area or usable floor area completed here in Hong Kong. While there's some fluctuation due to uh, the completion, slightly completion time, the total GFA completed each year at a very high level in Hong Kong and very steady in the last five years. So we are continue to build, committed to build uh, more building, more high rise building to cope with the needs of Hong Kong. So this brings me to another interesting point, how we use the four space we created by our skyscrapers. As compared with other skyscrapers in Asia, most of Hong Kong's uh, area are for residential uses. This gives rise to a very high uh, density of our urban population, as I mentioned earlier. Apart from residential area, the uses in Hong Kong also related to a lot, a lot of very special use. So starting from the left of this line, the first one is the tallest hospital building in the world. And the next one, 143 meter, the tallest Coca-Cola bottling facility in the world. <laughs> and the third one, something you may not like to see, is the tallest death skyscrapers. What it means is that they are building for columbarium users. And the fourth one is the largest concrete logistic building in the world. Their footprint is huge. They are talking about a footprint similar in size to the Pentagon House in uh, Washington, D.C. So these are very interesting uses. We are building these high scrapers for the out of necessity. It's not for iconic features. It's mainly to fulfill our daily needs. So as I mentioned earlier, we build skyscrapers out of necessity. We did not uh, rise to the top of by policy intervention. Nevertheless, the government play, does play a very important role in the design, construction, and maintenance of skyscrapers. Our work involves many aspects, which I would like to briefly cover in the coming slides. First, skyscrapers has, uh, has been a large building bulk. So in recent years, there have been strong public concerns over the quality and sustainability of the built environment. Issues relating to the bulk and the height of uh, buildings, air ventilation, greening, and energy efficiency in buildings has been discussed among various stakeholders uh, like the professionals, green groups, as well as the general public. So in response, we have, <coughs> excuse me, we have full public engagement, develop a package of measures to foster the quality and sustainable, uh, sustainable built environment in Hong Kong. One of the most a uh, notable example is the promulgation of the Sustainable Building Design Guideline in 2011, which stipulates requirements on building setback, building separation, site coverage of greenery, etc. So this requirement can improve the air ventilation, enhance the air environmental quality at pedestrian levels, and uh, mitigate the heat island effects arising from the undesirable warning effect 
of the long buildings. So another example is the review of the wind code. One of the objectives is to incorporate the latest advancement in the wind engineering technology for the design of tall buildings in Hong Kong. Now, new guidance on the assessment of uh, acute wind responses, uh, sheltering effects of uh, surrounding buildings, uh, wind directional effect, etc., has been incorporated in the code to give guidance to petitioners for their design. Apart from large building bows, skyscrapers also imply more occupants in one building. So from the government, government perspective of will, we need to ensure their safety. This is one of our prime consideration. In this regard, we recently issued the latest version of the fire safety code in 2012, which combined the previous fire resisting construction means of escape and also the means of access for firefighting into one practice notes. Uh, the code also allowed the alternative use of fire engineering approach instead of the conventional prescriptive approach. This gives a comprehensive sort of, uh, option for meeting the performance requirements and thus uh, facilitate the fire safety design of the high-rise buildings. There is also a need to ensure safe evacuation of people with a disability in, uh, in case of fire. <coughs> as well as to address the need of the increasing number of elderly in the, build, in the society. It is therefore a need for us to have a provision of temporary refuse force and <coughs> force, especially in high-rise buildings, as a proper means of escape for those who uh, have a special needs. Another area worth mentioning is about energy efficiency. So skyscraper with their large number of occupants take up a large proportion of the total energy consumption in the cities. So to improve the energy efficiency of high-rise building, we introduce a design and construction requirement governing the uh, residential thermal transfer values so that we can have uh, more environmental sustainable buildings. Ah, you want to know about this. <coughs> so ensuring about the skyscrapers uh, resilient against uh, a worse weather and natural hazard like the one on this picture, a typhoon is coming. So Hong Kong is an area prone to typhoon during the monsoon season. So at this very moment, a strong typhoon is approaching Hong Kong. Under the threat of uh, climate changes, such kind of extreme, extreme weather is expected to be more common in the future. And it is important to ensure our buildings are resilient. And also, you will notice, you are quite surprised, even in the uh, under typhoon signal number eight, Hong Kong is still a very vibrant city. A lot of people will go outside uh, using our public transport system to the restaurant, to cinemas, for entertainment, and uh, visiting friends. So you can enjoy it in the next, uh, next day or so. <laughs> so in this regard, okay, we have a call on the structural use of concrete, which provide design guidelines for very high strength concrete up to grade 100, i.e. is 100 Newton per millimeter square, very high strength, what we call the ultra high strength concrete. With the corresponding requirement for prevention of spalling in high strength concrete, and uh, we also commissioned recently a consultant study on the structural use of glass with the objective to develop a code relevant to a local condition. Hopefully, the industry will find this new code useful, particularly in the design of curtain wall, which is very popular in Hong Kong. So while earthquake is not a very common in Hong Kong, we have commissioned a study to formulate a tailor-made uh, code of practice on seismic requirement, and taking into account the relevant international standard and also local geology, topography, etc., so that we can give adequate guidelines for petitioner in Hong Kong. While buildings become taller and taller, developers are keen to deliver their new high-rise building within the same construction time frame. I think Tony know about it, as they use the two. So that's why technology and innovation come into play. And on government's part, we try to adapt a facilitating approach as far as possible. We have adopted a multi-prong approach to facilitate innovation design, innovative design of new buildings, including the modernization of building design standard uh, stipulating in the building ordinance and also its regulation. 
and also we're transforming the uh, cur currently common prescriptive standards to performance-based requirements. So all these requirements imposed by buildings department have built in a very flexible, or what we call the adjustment, adjustment mechanism in the form of an expanded building committee on an as needed basis to include relevant non-government experts into the committee to provide advices on special needs of uh, certain projects. Construction time has been compressed by the wider use of uh, precast elements in Hong Kong. We have issued a few months ago the new version of the core practice for precast concrete construction so as to keep abreast with the latest development in design, technology, and construction methodology. The last aspect I would like to cover is the maintenance of our skyscrapers. Our tall building cannot be sustained in the absence of uh, proper maintenance, particular at most of them are under multiple ownership. With the highly fragmented ownership, an ever greater effort is needed to consolidate the owner's will on the proper management and maintenance of their buildings. So the case of maintenance is effected uh, right at, from the uh, design stage. So while in design and construction will shape the inherent quality of the, uh, of the body of the buildings, we, the operation stage is longest and can frustrate the, on exploring the sustainability uh, quality by the, uh, by the architects and engineers. So proper maintenance and management are not only important to sustaining the building itself, they can also crucially influence the safety and hygiene of the buildings uh, and the city as a whole. So in this aspect, we have adopted a multiple approach in ensuring the building stock is well maintained. We have implemented the mandatory building inspection scheme and the mandatory window inspection scheme so as to encourage the owners to inspect their building and to provide proper maintenance. So in the longer one, we promote a building safety culture in Hong Kong, which is the best way to ensure building safety. So finally, skyscrapers do not give a city, uh, it's not just only gives a city of its icon and also the people's interest, uh, place of interest and attention. But it is also a testimony of an exemplary or coordination of develop, uh, developers, uh, dedicated and almost efforts of the architects, engineers, surveyors, and all walks of construction expertise and consultant. So what's more, at the modern time, perhaps, is the added facility from all related government regulation to make it a sustainable place for our people. I hope my presentation had given you an, uh, an overview of the skyscraper in Hong Kong, as well as the facilitating role played by the government.